I danced in the morning when the world was young. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance and he and I lead you all. Wherever you may be and I lead you all in the dance and he. I danced for the scribes and the Pharisees. They wouldn't dance, they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, James and John. They came with me so the dance went on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance and he and I lead you all. Wherever you may be and I lead you all in the dance and he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They went, they stripped, they hung me high. Left me there on the cross to die. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance and he and I lead you Wherever you may be, I'm gonna need you all in the dance and be. I'm afraid, okay, for health and safety reasons, okay, yeah, no problem. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Please be seated. Nothing to beat the Dubliners to get into the, the joy of the moment, okay. Funerals. Oh, and welcome to everyone who's watching, okay. Hello, everyone. Funerals are sad occasions. We know that because we are human. Some live longer, some live shorter lives. We miss one another, and that's always sad. However, for Catholic Christians, a funeral is an opportunity to rejoice. St. Augustine said, We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. So today is Edward's Resurrection Day. It's his day where he meets the risen saviour who lived and died for him. This is an Irish funeral and there's emerald green the like of which I've never seen. 
This is a royal funeral. This is a Plantagenet funeral. All right? So we have lots of things to celebrate today in this wonderful uh, life. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we have come here today to remember before God our brother Edward, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, to commit his body to be cremated, and to comfort one another in our grief. As we prepare for these sacred rites, let us call to mind our sins. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that Edward and all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Now, Paul is a curious character. In the early days of the Christian church, he persecuted the first Christians and bumped them off. And then he had that amazing experience on the Damascus Road where he saw the risen Christ. And the risen Christ said to him, Saul, because that was his name before he was converted, why are you persecuting me? And from being an enemy of the church, he became the best exponent of the resurrection and the Christian faith. And at the heart of the Christian faith is love. This is what he talks about when he wrote to the church in Corinth all those years ago. I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have all prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burnt, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For our knowledge is perfect, and our prophecy is imperfect. But when the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now, we see through a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall understand fully, even as I've been fully understood. So faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now we're going to hear a great hymn, Do Not Be Afraid.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those words were said to the disciples on Holy Thursday, the day before Good Friday. They'd had the Last Supper. Jesus had consecrated them bishops of the church, or apostles. And they'd gone into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Jesus had gone to one side to pray alone. That very harrowing prayer. That prayer, when I hear it mentioned in John's Gospel, sends a shiver down my spine. Father, if it be possible, let this...